management of diabetic retinopathy. So I'll be covering fluorescein angiograms, OCT, and uh, OCT angiography. So I'll kickstart with fluorescein angiography. So it's basically detection of retinal vessels and leakage by injecting a fluorescein dye in your peripheral. Now the flow diagram here depicts how the dye will reach the eye. So once it is injected into the peripheral vein, comes into the circulatory system, it will reach the internal carotid, then the ophthalmic artery, and then the retinal and choroidal circulation. So choroid filling is a second prior to the retinal filling. Now this is a quick video to show the choroidal arterial, arteriovenous, and the venous phase. In a diabetic, the arteriovenous phase of the angiogram usually depicts the retinal vascular abnormalities. FSE details are also better appreciated. We can see abnormal neovascular fronts, um, small dot-like microaneurysms, and an area of non-filling, what we commonly call them as capillary non-perfusion areas. All these details are much easily seen in the early arteriovenous phase of the angiogram. So now coming to the role of fluorescein angiography in diabetic retinopathy, it's basically to guide the laser treatment for diabetic macular edema and to identify suspected new vascularization. It is also used at times to evaluate the unexplained vision loss in a diabetic. It will be better explained once we share the situations. So in case of a mild to moderate NPTR, you don't need an angiogram unless there is an associated DME and you want to know the details of. So FFA in mild to moderate NPDR is needed. In case of severe NPDR, at times it helps you to differentiate it from an early PDR. Now the early frame of fluorescein angiography here depicts an intraretinal microvascular abnormality seen in the nasal retina which clearly does not leak in the late phase and thus ruling out that the, it was not an NVE, it was not a case of a PTR. So you could kind of wait to start your PRP. It is not a clinical indication. In case of proliferative diseases, even though the diagnosis is clear cut, but um, if there's any doubt, you can always run an angiogram to confirm the source and the number of NVs and also to know about the diabetic matter edema. Now here, the patient had blocked fluorescence from a preretinal bleed with NVE, which is seen in the superior nasal quadrant. This classifies it as a high-risk PDR and need for an urgent PRP laser, whereas the other picture shows multiple NVEs in a case of a low-risk disease. Now, in cases with mild vitreous hemorrhage, again, fluorescein helps you to confirm the source of the bleed. Like here, the fundus depicts mild vitreous bleed. The fluorescein angiogram early in the late phase picks up an NVD at the disc, which is more than one fourth, confirming this as a case of PDR. However, in case of dense vitreous hemorrhage, fluorescein angiogram is not important as it will fail to give you any significant information. So rather Next, um, does it have any role after treatment? Um, at times, yes. It confirms the successful regression of the NVE following the PRP. Now, this image is taken three months post laser treatment. No new NVEs were detected, hence indicating that you have retina for a while. Now, um, in this particular case, it's a type 1 diabetic treated with PRP for PDR three years back came for a regular checkup, fluorescein angiography confirms the presence of an NVE in temporally, and thus suggesting that a PRP augmentation would be probably helpful in the long. Coming to the role of fluorescein angiography in diabetic macular underlying pathology. Now this is situation number one, where the focal leaks from the microaneurysm is identified in temporal to the fovea in case of a non-centered AME, all you need to do is good focal laser to your microaneurysms and remember not to treat within the 5% fovea. This is situation two, again a diabetic treated previously with macular laser, the laser spots are visible on the superior temporal part of the macula. Now the DME is identified on the OCT scan, but once you run your angiography, you know the real source and which are these microaneurysms which are not been previously lasered. 
if the patient is not willing for an antivirgin. Now, this is again adiabatic macular edema with gross DMA and OCT. So until you run an angiography, you won't realize that here you are dealing with an ischemic. So to summarize, FFP is important at baseline to identify the type of DMEs to the treatment. Now, moving on to what we know as ultra-wide field flows in angiography. So the traditional fundus photography um, FFA captured around 75 degrees of your fields, whereas with the help of ultra wide field, you can visualize up to degrees. And thus, uh, the peripheral MBEs, which are usually missed by the traditional FFA, can be easily picked up. Now, moving on to the OCT, optical coherence tomography, and the most widely and commonly used diagnostic imaging modality these days. This is how a normal OCT looks like. I won't be going into the detail. Now, the common indications of OCT use in diaptic retinopathy is what we have to discuss responses. Now, this is a very traditional classification of a diabetic macular edema on OCT, which is based on the morphology or the presence of a fraction. Three, in clinical practice, these are the common patterns that we see. So this is uh, a case of a diffuse diabetic macular edema. You can very clearly see um, enlarged hyporeflective space diabetic macular edema. Now this is the cystic type uh, where you see large hyporeflective oval intraretinal cystic fluid spaces in the outer plexiform, outer nuclear layer, and at times the tiny ones in the inner nuclear layer as well. So I'll kick start with so now there is a little blockage here. Phobia and the tractional component to the DMA is of importance for your clinic. Well. Now, the, another way in which the clinical practice we or the non-random and the randomized uh, trials um, they usually work is to differentiate as center-involving DME or the non-center-involving DME. So, for most of the um, STOCTs, the cutoff value is around 280 to 290 microns. Anything more DME. A typical non-center DME, you have lasered it six months. This is pre. This is post. You can see the foveal thickness uh, was normal before, is continues to be normal after. Initiated. Skip that. We're running out Mission. of time. And I'll just quickly move on to the OCT angiographies. Yeah. Now, moving on to the OCT angiography is the most fancy, easy to use, non invasive way of doing it. Now, the OCTA images, they are viewed in tandem with corresponding structural NPAS and cross-sectional OCTB scans. It has the ability to visualize each vascular plexus separately. And so, uh, in a diabetic patient, it's usually the VR interface, superficial, and the deep plexus is what we usually look at. That's the, how the image is usually seen up on the screen. Then you have to analyze the different vascular plexus. This is the CC layer, and this picture is taken at Exist. Now, the conventional OCT images will capture only the 3mm and the central 6mm scans. Uh, the quantitative OCT parameters also helps you to understand the logistics about how you um, differentiate. Now, image on your left is a fluorescein angiogram in case of a PDR. Conventional standard OCT frames will not pick up required details, but if you have the OCTA wide field montages, they show and um, the complete details and they add a uh, very easy non-invasive diagnostic modality to pick up the and to PDR cases. Again, a 12 by 12 mm montage image of the OCTA, it has the ability to identify almost all the peripheral NVs as seen by the RUM. Again, um, OCTA uh, repeatable follow up exams can be easily performed. Color fundus image shows a florid NVD seen on the OCT image as well as 
post laser OCTA did not pick up any NVT and hence confirming the successful regression of your. This is another example, drastic reduction in the caliber of NVE with pruned edges falling in. Um, now this is something where the world is heading towards, that is to classify the different stages using OCTA montages. Mm, the first picture is of a moderate NPDR, the second picture is of a severe NPDR, which you see a lot of non-perfusions, but no clear-cut NVEs or NVD. Uh, this, the last picture is of a case of a PDR with a florid NVEs easily seen up on the edges. And uh,